Okay, so I'm going to break with tradition here and publish two videos in one day because I played another game and the analysis engine on the website where I played this indicated that there were no errors on my part in the game at all in any way, not even an inaccuracy. So uh, this was played against a fairly strong player, um, you know, once again in the 2100s, which, you know, given the fact that they blundered at the end of the game is kind of hard to believe, but that player also made no mistakes, and it's it's rare when you see somebody just make a game with some inaccuracies and then finally blunder against somebody who didn't make any mistakes at all. So this is an example of when somebody plays C4, I, I don't really have um, something really completely unsound to play against C4 uh, as much as I want to. So basically what I want to do is play some sort of modified Dutch and um, you know playing f5 right away does work um, but it's not quite as exact as playing e5 and if you saw the game um, uh, one of my videos about how to beat grandmasters I think it was part two where I played a X world champion uh, who played c4 uh, and I played e5 right away um, the idea of playing e5 these days for me is the same thing as it is um, normally. There's a, a kind of formation, and I, I'm not sure whether it's called the Botfinic system or what it is exactly that a lot of players are playing these days as white, that includes Fianchetto and the white bishop and playing a Dutch type, um, or rather a English opening type defense um, as white. And, and uh, you know, basically they hold their center pawns back and in some cases, if you get them both bishops, and they move a knight to e2 and c3, and they leave themselves white squared weaknesses in the middle, and when they try to take over the center, especially the d5 square. So, um, in this case, there was no minority attack uh, involved, but trading off the bad bishop, which is the, the white squared bishop for black, becomes a priority. And, and mostly why I'm putting this game up is because I'm a little curious myself to see. Uh, whether or not another engine also indicated that there were no real errors in this game. And so I'm going to turn on the engine and we're going to show you, see F5, now it, it gives that, white, white has a very sound advantage here. This is what I describe as the Botfinic system, it's probably not. But I'm kind of an old-fashioned, stuck in the last century of names guy. doesn't really matter what it is, it matters what you play against it. So the computer says d4 is a good move, um, and this is part of the system that they play. Now, when you look at it, you know, the white, some of those white squares look like Swiss cheese, and it looks like you ought to be able to just move uh, e4 and plop a knight down on e5 and then start heading for f3 and d3 and uh, on the way attack that loose c4 pawn. But it's really not that simple, because uh, you're also giving up squares like d4 and f4. So um, it says here, interestingly, <laughs> Bishop to b6 is a good move, so I just make that move. Um, and the reason I make that move is because d4 to me is not that much of a threat yet. The computer says he should make it. And the computer's in love with just moving my bishop back to b6 again. So I'm kind of a traditionalist unless I'm forced to do so. Don't like moving the same piece twice till I moved all my pieces once. Okay, so. What did it think of my move a6? I thought for a while about this a6 move. And it looks like it's uh, perfectly reasonable and just as good as moving, moving bishop to b6. Okay, So here's where he goes a3 instead of plopping his knight down on d5. And now I start kind of a dubious adventure with my queen. Now the, the idea behind this is to go after the king, obviously. I'm going to move my queen to h5. I'm going to try to get an f-pawn push in. And I'm going to try to activate my white squared bishop. And the the one thing I really have to worry about right now is developing that white squared bishop. There's two things. Number one, it ties. It's kind of tied to the b7 pawn if I ever want to move that knight. And number two, if I ever move it to a place like e6, then I'm suspect because what I've got is like a d4 d5 scenario with one of those uh, one of a uh, piece fork things. So. Um, you know, when I move my queen there, I realize I'm weakening the c7 square, and he tries to take advantage of that straight away, which is what I see the computer recommends. So uh, I was well aware that could happen. And I retreat properly to a place where I made for it. 
nitrate properly, and he takes back with the pawn, which uh, it's kind of the same argument the computer's using. Either way is fine. Okay. Queen to c2 is what he played. It's almost like he's got a computer. And like c6, I played c6. So this is like one computer playing another computer. Except I guarantee I wasn't using one. So uh, once again, takes, takes, exactly what happened to the game. Now here's where um, it varies. He says d4 gives him a even game or very slight advantage. And I believe he developed his bishop, which is, looks like it's equally as good. At which point it says I should play queen to f7. So instead I develop my bishop, which uh, uh, Peter apparently has no problem with any of these things. So now it says I should move queen to f7. I still don't understand what it is about queen to f7 that's so magical. Um, maybe it's a preventative. You know, Maybe it's like I can put my bishop on b3 if he moves a rook to d1. Instead, I make this amazing, dubious move. Um, I trade off his bishop, which is one of the things I put in the slide, and so the computer didn't really like that very much. This computer probably thinks that's an inaccuracy, this, this machine. And probably, look, Stockfish 8 says you should just take it, which I expected him to do. I expected him to take it, go to the 7th rank, and start attacking my d-pawn. Um, however, he pushes. Now, that that's just a strategic error, you know. When he pushes, he's giving me a whole variety of things I can do, although the computer says I need to retreat bishop to e6 and leave his bishop alone, let him attack my c, you know, whatever. Uh, I like the idea of opening my f-file, so I'm just going to take it. And now the computer says that's perfectly okay. And as you can see, his bishop no longer pressures my c6 pawn after taking it, so now the computer has changed its mind. Although it says moving king to h1 is kind of an important move here for him. And, uh, that is kind of a little interesting move because it certainly looks like his f2 pawn is in danger. So he moves his rook. And now I get an advantage. And this move I took quite a while on because it's possible to just let him have that pawn. So I protected it. Once again, he wants to move the king in the corner. And this is where I think he went really wrong. Um, you move knight to c3, and sure enough, that's what the computer says too. So what was a better move? Moving the king in the corner, or knight to c1. So what's so bad about knight to c3 in this position? Well, there's a little issue with the d4 square. Um, the knight is somewhat misplaced. The knight needs to go somewhere where it can help the defense of the king, and it really has no future on c3. It blocks its own bishop in, it blocks the queen off the diagonal. Um, it gives up the d4 square to a potential of ever having a knight there, or a, you know, I can move a bishop there straight away. So it's just not a good move. And so he goes down one, and once again the computer wants me to move queen to f7, threatening that b3 square. But I move it over where I'm more likely to go after his king. So now he moves rook to d2, which is a good move. I, I felt it was. It attack, you know, defends the f7 square, makes room for his knight to go to d1 if he has to move there. Now it wants me once again to put my queen back to that one. Okay, so um, now it says he should be exchanging queens, you know, and he doesn't do that. He moves his knight back. And if, if you look at this, uh, I'll move backwards again once. I, I had a sense he might be trying to double here. You know, if he's going to double on the d-file and try to um, go after my d-pawn, I'm going to move rook to f6 and move my other rook over and defend it that way and possibly shift my rook over to h6. If I ever get rook to f6 to h6 in, he's going to have a lot of trouble. So it says here I should move bishop takes g2, which I don't do. Instead I bridge my rook. Now it's begging him to go ahead and go after possibly my a pawn check. And There's another very sound reason for making a move like that. And the reason is that it covers the f1 rook, believe it or not. Because if he ever wants to move his knight to e3, that rook needs coverage. So he may need coverage anyway after I double. So he moves his knight and it wants me to trade bishops again. And uh, the follow-up to that is kind of interesting, probably. So bishop knight takes g2. 
So he takes back with a knight, rook on d to f8, checks, queen to f7. So basically it says it's an even game. Okay. So now I double. Now it says queen to d1 is the right move, trying to trade us off. And this is where he falls apart. So Stockfish 8 says queen to c4 check and gives a very long, even type of situation. This game is uh, defendable for white. Um, you know, obviously I have a threat of bishop takes knight, uh, followed by like maiden 4 or something, you know. So he has to be aware of that, and he, he just isn't. I, I don't know why. You know, maybe he didn't see the x-ray attack, or maybe this was some sort of big bad mouse slip where he went to go to c4 and like he went to a5. So I'm really not sure why, but if he checked me, I had to move in the corner. And so now after bishop takes knight, the game's over and he resigns. So it's a horrible, disastrous blunder in the end, but it's a game with no mistakes. And in general, this is how games are won. But it, it went from a perfectly even game to a tactical, silly error. So um, we can just see for a second what this computer says about um, going to c4. Check. Now, interestingly, this computer likes to move d5, which is what I had intended to play. And uh, the analysis that Stockfish 8 gave uh, said that that wasn't such a good idea. Um, I'm not sure why. But if I move d5, see, I, I don't think he has time to take that. If he takes it with the idea of pushing to d6 with a discovered check, I can still move my knight to d5 and save it. Um, if he takes it, I intend to take his knight on e3. Now that, that may be the wrong move, so we'll, we'll see what happens here. Okay. says he should go queen to e2. He can't take it. So that keeps coverage on this, and that way this is not loose, and he double covers it. So let's see what happens if he does take it. So now we're doing the right kind of he loses. Okay, so my, my instinct was correct. I move bishop takes e3, and now the question is, what can he do? And it's uh, the computer's only recommending d takes c6, discover check. As I said, if he pushes, then I just move my knight there. So um, let's see what happens after the discover check. We go in the corner, and he doesn't take back. Okay. Which is interesting, isn't it? So let's see what happens if he takes now that that now that that's covered. But what's going to happen is you know he's going to lose his queen. So. He's just basically lost the piece. And maybe more. So it's got a check or something. So uh, this game would be over anyway. At any rate, I was intellectually curious to see what would have happened after the check and if we were on the right track. and. It's one of these rare games with no mistakes, so, and it should be because there's no unsound, you know, chess part about it. Really, we played completely sound chess, although we did play the e5 and f5 against the queen spawn opening. So, see you later.